MC. Dr. Rajawahar, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me here today for this uh, challenging presentation. Uh, my talk today is to discuss the updates in the treatment of uh, thymic malignancies. So uh, my disclaimer, I don't have um, uh, beautiful Kaplamai curves or large phase three trials to boast of uh, in this presentation, but I'd like to give an overview of what we, we have today and a background regarding the treatment options and where we are heading in terms of future treatment options. So overall, this is a rare disease entity, uh, thymomas, about 1.5 cases a million, about 400 cases a year in US. Uh, however, about half of uh, the anterior or mediastinal tumors uh, turn out to be uh, thymic malignancies. Uh, we all are aware of the unique association uh, thymic malignancies have with autoimmune diseases, and it's quite important to distinguish uh, the pathology of uh, thymoma versus thymic carcinoma, as this does have implications for treatment. Historically, chemotherapy has been the cornerstone for a majority of uh, these malignancies, but there have been recent advances in terms of targeted therapy and also with immunotherapy. However, we have to remind ourselves about the potential for autoimmune toxicities uh, with these agents. In terms of staging, uh, we have the historical Matioka staging and the more recently introduced uh, TNM staging. The Matioka staging essentially uh, stages the thymic tumors based on the degree of invasion of the capsule around the tumor and the surrounding uh, structures. And the TNM staging has largely been introduced recently to uh, have some form of uh, stability and uh, in terms of comparative outcomes between the phase two trials that are being reported and the standard TNM staging applies. In terms of outcomes, uh, there's a clear disparity between outcomes for uh, thymic carcinoma and for patients with uh, thymoma. Uh, the column on the left for thymoma clearly shows that for instance, stage four malignancies, uh, the five-year survival uh, can be between 75% and 83%. However, for thymic carcinoma, this drop down to less than 50%. So it makes a big difference to identify the type of the tumor and also uh, the type of treatments required for uh, these malignancies. In terms of incidence, uh, the, they have been subtyped into type A, A, B, uh, B, and uh, carcinoma. Uh, this is a diagram of thymus uh, with the various subtypes highlighted in terms of incidence. Uh, incidence of thymic carcinoma is less than 20% as we can see here. But how do you uh, subtype them into type A's and B's and C's? This is just a quick overview uh, that we found recently. Uh, thymic tumors, once you've diagnosed uh, thymic malignancy, you try and see if they have have a lymphoid component. For patients which have a high lymphoid component, look for epithelial component. And if they have a subtype epithelioid, you're trying to see if they have got a higher intensity of lymphoid cells or epithelial cells. If they have a higher density of lymphoid cells, it's more a B1, more epithelial component type of B3. However, with lymphoid component, if they are uh, more uh, epithelioid, you're looking at B3 and a carcinoma. And the spindle type, you're looking at type A and type AB. So it can be quite challenging, but largely the pathologists uh, make that diagnosis for us. In terms of um, early management, vast majority of cases, uh, uh, thankfully, are uh, presenting with the earlier stages where surgery is still an option. For patients uh, presenting stage one that have an R0 resection, surveillance is the preferred option after that. Uh, for patients with um, stage two or four thymoma, thymic carcinoma, following R0 resection, post-operative radiotherapy can be considered. However, for patients with R1 resection, thymoma, post-operative radiotherapy is strongly recommended. And in addition, for patients with thymic carcinoma with R1 resection, in addition to radiotherapy, chemotherapy can be considered. For patients having an R2 resection, definitive chemoradiotherapy uh, can be uh, an option for these patients. For patients that present with uh, more advanced disease, uh, you can consider either concurrent chemoradiotherapy or a neoadjuvant chemotherapy to try and downstage them to see if further surgery uh, can be an option for these patients. Patients with extra thoracic metastases, chemotherapy alone uh, is the preferred option. Uh, thymic malignancies, 
can have a significant degree of autoimmunity. As we are all aware, uh, the thymus gland is inherent to the immune system. The immature T cell progenitors enter the thymus gland, interact with the thymic epithelial cells, and uh, uh, undergo positive and negative selection. Uh, thereby, uh, these cells uh, do not react with self-antigen and uh, deal with the uh, antigens they need to deal with. And this clearly requires a normal thymic art architecture, uh, expression of uh, MSC class 2, and normal expression of autoimmune regulators. When there are thymic epithelial tumors, this can all be uh, disrupted, and uh, obviously this can lead to uh, T-cell-mediated uh, autoimmune disorders as well. Uh, as I've mentioned previously, autoimmunity and thymic malignancies can be quite common and sometimes can be a presenting symptom for some of these patients. Predominantly, myasthenia gravis is quite common, but there are several other listed autoimmune disorders such as pure red cell aplasia, uh, good syndrome, um, SLE, uh, other neurological disorders. Uh, but what's interesting to note in this study is that uh, the likelihood of autoimmune disorders is uh, more common in the uh, thymoma A's and AB's, uh, predominantly in type B, we can have uh, about 70% incidence of autoimmune disorders, but for patients with carcinoma, the incidence is quite low. For instance, in this study, uh, there was no incidence of myasthenia gravis and about 6% other autoimmune uh, disorders. I uh, would just like to present this uh, case that I have seen recently in clinic, a 65-year-old male uh, presented in December 2020 with chest pain and breathlessness, uh, still had a good performance status at presentation, only past medical history, hypertension, uh, ex-smoker with no other significant history. This was a CT scanner presentation. The yellow arrows uh, uh, represent the anterior and mediastinal large mass, and uh, the white arrows posteriorly representing uh, pleural uh, dissemination. And again, uh, there was involvement of the anterior pleura as well. So quite extensive disease at presentation, and the patient was symptomatic uh, with this. Uh, this biopsy of the posterior uh, pleural component was done, which can confirmed this to be a thymoma B1, B2, with no evidence of carcinoma, uh, staged as stage four, based on the extent of pleural dissemination. So how do you manage these uh, patients? So in terms of available treatment options for frontline therapy, platinum-based chemotherapy is the preferred option. For recurrent disease, we have several small studies which have shown um, evidence for um, activity, and there are newer experimental therapies such as immunotherapy and targeted therapies, which I'd like to uh, dwell on. So historically, first-line platinum-based chemotherapy combination, the preferred option is uh, cisplatin atriamycin cyclophosphamide at a given doses here, uh, which can have an overall response rate of nearly 50% and a complete response rate of 10%. Uh, clearly, this is based on small phase two studies, but this is uh, one of the standards of care for atomic malignancies. This is the recent NCCN guidelines, which shows the CAP regimen as the preferred regimen for thymoma and carboplatin paclitaxel combination to be the preferred first line regimen for atomic carcinoma. And these regimens can be used uh, for uh, um, interchangeably for thymoma and thymic carcinoma as well. So how did this patient uh, get on? So we gave him the standard recommended CAP regimen for six cycles. After cycle one, he needed 20% dose reduction because of uh, toxicity. The scan on the left is pre-chemotherapy and the scan on the right post six cycles of chemotherapy. As you can see, he responded quite nicely. Uh, the anterior mediastinal mass uh, uh, was shrinking uh, very nicely. His symptoms improved just after two cycles of chemotherapy. The posterior pleural uh, mass as well reduced uh, nicely. Again, uh, the scan on the left pre-chemotherapy and the one right post-chemotherapy showing excellent response uh, to treatment. Uh, vast majority of cases in the small phase two studies that we have seen, this response should be durable for a few months. However, uh, patients can behave quite erratically. Uh, so this was May a CT scan. However, in June, uh, this patient developed unexplained uh, liver deterioration. He came jaundiced and uh, once we did his blood test, we found that his bilirubin was in excess of 500, 600 by the time and his ALT and AST were almost 1,500. So liver ultrasound did not show any significant abnormality. Uh, there was no obstruction. So it is quite unexplained, most likely uh, thought to be paraneoplastic. 
patient uh, had a good performance status as well, and he opted to go to another hospital for uh, further investigation at a liver unit. But this just highlights the challenges that we can have for these patients and uh, the autoimmune disorders that can uh, play spoil sport for potential treatment options. So looking at the genomic landscape for thymic epithelial tumors, uh, multiple uh, genetic abnormalities uh, can be found, but so far nothing uh, targetable. There can be overexpression of uh, several genes such as EGFR, HER2, BCL2, uh, but uh, targetable mutations are uh, still being uh, looked at. Uh, for instance, uh, this more recent study showed a prevalence of mutations in GTF21, uh, 2i, and more endolin tumors, HRAS mutation, NRAS, and TP53 mutations, most likely found a mutations that can happen early in development. But further studies are needed. And the big challenge for a thymoma is the incidence is low. And to have large randomized studies can be uh, quite challenging in this setting. So mostly evidence is developed based on early phase one and phase two studies. Uh, tumor mutational burden is quite low in thymic epithelial tumors, like this study looking at 21 other cancers showed that uh, only other cancers with lower tumor mutational burden uh, than uh, thymic epithelial tumors is probably medulloblastoma and rhabdomyosarcoma. Uh, sarcoma. Most other cancers have a higher tumor mutation burden as compared to uh, these. Uh, looking at PDL1 score, uh, appears that the PDL1 is uh, very well expressed, and the vast majority of uh, tumors, uh, type of malignancies, had high PDL1 expression. Type B3 predominantly, nearly 100% uh, in this study. Type A had the uh, lesser one. So uh, obviously, there was no significant correlation between the PDL1 intensity and lymphocyte uh, infiltration uh, in this study. Uh, this uh, case report. Uh, highlighted the role of pembrolizumab, the uh, scan on the, uh, the panels on the left before therapy, after two cycles of therapy, and after eight cycles of uh, pembrolizumab, uh, showed a very good response uh, in this case report, as you can see, with the almost disappearance of uh, the lung nodules. So this prospective phase two trial uh, of pembrolizumab, standard dose 200 milligrams Q3 weekly, 33 patients, uh, platinum refractory, uh, the plan was to include thymoma and thymic carcinoma. Uh, thymoma, only seven patients were included. Recruitment was stopped after seven patients. I'll come to that in a minute. Uh, the remaining patients, uh, thymic carcinoma, 26 patients. Response rate for thymoma, 29%. And for thymic carcinoma, 19%. As you can see, some durable uh, responses were seen uh, in the panel on the uh, waterfall plot on the right. The median progression free survival was uh, 6.1 months. However, clearly highlighting the risks associated with this treatment. The reason uh, the thymoma cohort was halted after seven patients is due to the high incidence of immune-related adverse events. Five out of seven patients that were included on the study with thymoma had significant grade three to four adverse events. Uh, four patients with thymic carcinoma also had a grade three to four immune-related adverse events. So four patients with thymoma, nearly over 70% had severe immune-related adverse events. 15% uh, of thymic carcinomas had severe immune-related adverse events. Uh, three patients with grade four myocarditis. Obviously, it is uh, much higher than uh, what we see in terms of immune-related adverse events in other disease setting. So it may be something more to do with the disease that these type of immune-related adverse events are uh, seen. Uh, three out of three patients with myasthenia gravis had a flare-up of symptoms uh, in the first cycle. Some patients had more than one immune-related adverse event, like patient number four had autoimmune hepatitis, colitis, conjunctivitis, dermatitis, and thyroiditis. So obviously, uh, it can be uh, quite complex having to deal with uh, multiple immune-related adverse events uh, at the same time. Uh, so this second study uh, from Washington specifically looked at role of pembrolizumab for uh, thymic carcinoma, standard dose pembrolizumab, 41 patients, uh, nearly 70% male, response rate of pembrolizumab, 22.5%. Uh, the median duration of response was just under two years, and median progression-free survival, 4.2 months. So early data, but quite encouraging for patients with uh, thymic carcinoma. However, uh, Toxicity, as I've mentioned earlier, uh, can be seen with regards to immune-related adverse events. Uh, six patients, uh, that's 15% developed severe autoimmune toxicity, including two patients with uh, myocarditis. Uh, 
PDL1 expression, does that correlate with uh, pembrolizumab response? Uh, the panel on the right for the Korean study showed that all five patients that had a good partial response or complete response, all these five patients had a PDL1 expression greater than uh, 50%. And in addition, the panel on the left for the study from Washington also showed that uh, the patients who were responding, the median uh, PDL1 score was above uh, 50%. So, PDL1, uh, high PDL1 expression may uh, obviously predict for response uh, to pembrolizumab in these uh, small studies. What about other immunotherapy drugs? This phase one dose escalation trial of velumab looked at eight patients, seven with thymoma, one thymic carcinoma, partial response rate of 57%, stable disease of 43%, uh, grade three to four adverse events seen in uh, 38% of patients. So early data, but shows encouraging a response for velumab. However, on the contrary, for nivolumab, this phase two trial looked at chemotherapy-resistant thymic carcinomas, a standard early dose of nivolumab, three milligram per kilogram every two weeks. 15 patients were included on the study. No uh, responses were seen, a 0% response. The trial was terminated early for inability to meet the stopping criteria, although we can see some uh, early durable responses on this trial. Looking at targeted... Uh, therapies, sinitinib, obviously we use that quite a lot in kidney cancer, at least early on. Uh, now we have uh, this phase two study with chemotherapy refractory thymic epithelial tumors, standard dose 50 milligram, four weeks on, two weeks off, and six weekly cycles as what we use in kidney cancer. Uh, this study looked at 23 thymic carcinomas and 16 patients with thymoma. The partial response for thymic carcinomas, 26% and 6% for uh, thymomas. However, uh, 13% of patients had a reduction in uh, uh, left ventricular ejection fraction. And there was an 8% mortality on this study. Multiple other grade three to four adverse events uh, were seen. So encouraging responses, but toxicity to be aware of on, in this context. Uh, but as standard, we know that sinitinib is quite a well-tolerated drug, but in this context, there were uh, considerable side effects. Uh, another targeted, multi-targeted therapy, lenvatinib, a multi-targeted inhibitor of VEGF, FGFR, and the retin C kit. This uh, phase two trial, single arm, 24 milligrams daily of uh, lenvatinib, uh, with a primary endpoint of objective response, encouraging uh, responses, 38% uh, response rate, with a median duration of response, 11.6 uh, months. In addition, secondary endpoints of uh, median progression free survival, 9.3 months, very encouraging. Median overall survival had not been reached, but the median 12 month survival probability was 83%. The summary of recent evidence for platinum refractory thymic carcinomas, uh, multiple drugs, uh, essentially phase two settings, and uh, uh, for instance, uh, amribicin, one of the uh, newer anthracyclines, plus carboplatin, response rate of 14%. Uh, S1, 30% response rate, Everolimus, 15%, Sinitinib, 26%, and Pembro, as I mentioned earlier, 22%. So overall, encouraging results varying from 15 to 30% early data, uh, and the toxicities, as we are aware of, uh, can be seen with targeted therapy as well, but more so for patients with immunotherapy, severe immune-related adverse events uh, can be a problem. Uh, this is the NCCN guidelines for second line systemic therapy. Multiple options based on uh, small retrospective studies on small early phase one and phase two trials. These are the options that can be considered. Uh, clearly uh, don't have FDA approval, but has NCCN backing for use of these drugs in the second line setting. So in conclusion, uh, we know that uh, there is significant activity of chemotherapy and uh, thymic epithelial tumors. There has been limited progress with uh, targeted therapy and immunotherapy, but it's quite encouraging. PD-1 and PDL one inhibitors have shown good efficacy in thymic epithelial tumors, but uh, severe high risk of immune-related adverse events has to be uh, kept in mind. So it's preferable to avoid uh, immunotherapy for patients with thymoma, specifically for those patients with uh, myasthenia gravis. Uh, for patients with thymic carcinoma, it can be uh, used with careful consideration with the immune, uh, uh, other immune uh, toxicities. Uh, it's challenging to do clinical trials in this rare setting, 
However, uh, we'll have to make do with what we have. And this is the current evidence that I have uh, summarized, and I'm happy to take any questions in the discussion. Thank you very much for listening.